Well, good morning and welcome to this, which is our fifth seminar in this series. And it's really exciting today to meet uh, Salome Vakanagel, who is an architect and an urban designer. And she's also uh, doing some studies at the moment, working at um, Versailles University near Paris. And she's going to be talking ab about her project, which is to do with how you can create a new kind of living space uh, in the rural areas around or a little bit further away from the city. So again, Salome, if you have uh, material for about 30, 40 minutes, that would be great. Maximum mm -hmm. 45 minutes. And then we have some questions for you, which uh, always come up. So over to you, Salome. Great. Thank you very much, Ruth. So I'm going to share my screen and the presentation. So you've got some images to put a figure on what I'm going to tell you. Yes, yeah. you can maximize the screen if you want. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Like this. Yeah. So hello, everyone. I'm really pleased to make this presentation in the framework of, uh, of Kinesis on invitation of uh, Ruth from the University of Navarra. Uh, as uh, she said, I, my name is Salome Vakarnagel. I'm, um, I'm an architect and urban planner, and I'm currently uh, doing a, a PhD, a research project uh, called R Ruapolis, uh, which is a project I'm currently developing uh, as a part of my uh, doctorate at the Investigation Laboratory of the Architecture School of uh, Versailles in France under the direction of uh, Suzanne Stacher and uh, in co-supervision with uh, Juan Jose Pons, which is a professor of geography at the University of Navarre. Uh, the, the Architecture School of uh, Versailles is also um, a sponsor for this project, as we will see at the end of the presentation. We organize together a summer school in the territory of uh, my research project. I launched this investigation in 2021 uh, as a practice-led PhD. So I'm going to show here uh, in the framework of this 45 minutes I've got uh, the theoretical backgrounds of uh, this project before we started the, the field work altogether in the framework of the summer school organized in the framework of, the, of this research project. So the idea of the Ruapolis came from a question a problematic that made its way during the last years. While I have been involved in the project of Repensar la Periferia, Rethinking the Periphery, which we developed together with Orecarie Studio here in Pamplona. Uh, during five years, we have been working on the suburban areas of Pamplona, which is the capital of Navarra. And uh, this has brought us to put the question, to put in question the limits of the city, of the metropolis, and the main concern that uh, came out of this process is, I would say, if we have the right as architects, as urban planners, to continue to plan peripheral uh, spaces and extensions of the city in the territory as we do it right now, or at the contrary, if we should think about other development models, not, not only in terms of uh, settlements, but also in terms of construction, of construction materials and of construction methods. The problematic of uh, the diffuse city, of the extended uh, city, of the never-ending urban space is actually uh, a very actual one. According to a study from 2020, the soil occupation by cities increased by 80% between uh, 1991 and 2015, which was four times more than initially pre predicted. And the same study from 2020 predicts now a six-fold increase in global urban space by 2100. In this context, it would be necessary to think about another model of city, one that is better adapted to current and future climatic and social contingency. And as a matter of fact, many architects and urban planners are conscious of the problem right now. In the state of the arts of, uh, of this research, we could, for example, mention the, uh, the work of uh, Paola Vigano, which is an Italian urbanist and professor at the EPFL in Lausanne, in Switzerland. And in this study, you can see here for the city of Geneva, you can see how she and her studio and her, studio and her students first analyzed the climatic evolution 
or of what, it, what is called the Big Geneva, the Grand Genève, which already exists and is constantly constantly growing. So the task of this uh, of this project was to think the future evolution regarding also uh, other aspects like here the climatic evolution of this area and how the city could evolve uh, according to this climatic evolution. And here they made one proposal, which is one of many proposals they made in, in the framework of, of this team in 2020. In this uh, visualization, the Big Geneva area could evolve as a metropolis, but a kind of different metropolis, which is constituted by villages. And uh, back to our context, uh, you can see here uh, the area I'm working on uh, currently. The Ruapolis focuses on the potential of rural winds for future regional development in a cross-border area, which is encompassing, uh, encompassing the region of Navarre, the northern parts of uh, Aragon on the Spanish side, both on the Spanish side, and on the other uh, side of the Pyrenees, the uh, Department of the Pyrenees Atlantic of the Atlantic Pyrenees in France. Pamplona is the capital of Navarre, as uh, some of you already know. This small metropolis alone counts for 50% of the total population of the region. And it's, it is also experiencing constant demographic and uh, geographical growth. On the other side of this uh, urban growth, um, of this constant and really growing constant growth of, uh, of uh, the urban area of Pamplona, you have a regional phenomenon which is sadly affecting also other parts of Europe, not only Navarre and not only the transporter space of the Pyrenees. In recent decades, urban growth has been accelerated by a rural exodus that has shaped much of the territory, not only the, the, the urban construction, the rural construction, the buildings, but also the soil. This gradual shift from rural to urban areas is particularly pronounced in regions like Navarre. A total of 109 villages have been abandoned in this, uh, in this uh, Spanish province, with a concentration of uh, around 30 villages located in the east of uh, Pamplona, as you can see on this map, around uh, also on the side of the Pyrenees, of the pre-Pyrenees. But we can also observe, so you can see you can see here the abandoned villages and in white the villages which are really threatened by abundance right now. So this is a study also from 2021 from uh, the University of Navarre. And on the other side of this phenomenon, you can also observe a movement which has been described since the decade of the 1970s, 1980s, which is described as neo-ruralism and which is now questioning a large part of the society with the challenge of climate change, and more particularly since the beginning of the pandemic, where indeed there is a renewed interest in the rural. And here in Navarre, uh, 26 abandoned rural settlements were reactivated and repopulated between 1981 and 2020. In most cases, through community reappropriation, with the agreements of uh, local authorities and their support, also in some cases not, and this, these villages are reoccupied and sometimes legalized after a while. So this is really like a, um, a community project in most of the cases. A book uh, published in 2016 has caused much, much debate in Spain and established a kind of specific terminology in the society the terminology of La España Vacía, literally the empty Spain, by journalist Sergio del Molino. This essay highlights a two-speed territory. On the one hand, you have the urban and uh, kind of European Spain. And on the other one, you have a depopulated Spain, which is the result, among other things, of political and infrastructural decisions that have constantly widened this gap between two realities the urban and the rural one. And if you have a closer look on this uh, map of Europe, you can see that not only Navarre, but large parts of the national ter territory of the Spanish territory are almost completely empty. With a population density, which is close to the level of Lapland in Finland, if you go, um, if you see on the, 
on, on the upper part of this map, you can compare the whiteness is uh, kind of the same than very deserted regions of, uh, of the north of Europe. And as we saw uh, with the example of uh, Paula Vigeno of this territory of the Big Geneva, uh, urban reflection and the reflection of an, a kind of uh, around an urban shift and uh, a reflection which is turned on the rural context can also go from problematics, not only of demographic uh, questions, but also of the climatic evolution, uh, evolution of our regions. If we get back to Navarre and have a closer look to this province in relation to its clima climatic evolution, like Paula Vigano is doing, we can see that there will be a huge climate shift, as it is expected in the current analysis uh, by, based on the heat waves of the last years. And we are not even talking of the heat waves of last summer of 2022, which have been really high because this is a, a study from 2021. Uh, on this study, you can see that by 2050, the bioclimatic bio conditions of the Pyrenean area will step back from a high mountain uh, biosphere. As you can see on the first map, which is the, the one on the left, on the upper part. So it will step back from uh, the condition of a high mountain biosphere to one of a middle high mountain. And by 2080, the actual uh, biosphere of the Pyrenean mountains will practically disappear. And uh, this area of the Pyrenean uh, mountains will transform itself to something that we could compare to a huge hill facing the climatic conditions we have actually around Pamplona. So the area of Pamplona, which is the, the, the flat area we have, a situation we have in most of the metropolis on the Euro European territory, the flat areas will have condition that could compare to a quite almost desertic one, which is which puts in question the, um, the, the provision we have for the evolution of the urban areas and make us um, make us see that it is impossible to continue like we are planning right now the urban evolution of these uh, metropolises. So these provisions, to my eyes, uh, get us out of the dialectic which always places rural and urban in opposition. Now we have to try to think as architects, as urban planners, about an alternative territorial planning proposal, that is to say, one which no longer develops from the historical urban nucleus, but which are uh, constantly, because, because they are constantly growing, but uh, from other uh, rural points, uh, which would uh, allow us to think something else than uh, multiplying the suburbs and the suburban space ad infinitum into the rural areas. So the basic idea of the rural police is to think about post-urban spaces where we could live and brave regarding this uh, climatic evolution we can see here. Uh, facing this matter of act, as I referred to at the beginning of the presentation, we could think about another model of city, one that is better adapted to current and future climatic and social contingencies. As you can see, for example, on this image, example of recent suburban settlements that were constructed in the most radical way uh, this one uh, near Madrid, and this one being uh, from Pamplona, so from the area of study, the neighborhood of Soto Liscairo. So the Rapolis is uh, actually an hypothesis for a territorial project. It is a conglomerate of abandoned villages identified as potentialities for the territory because they are located on an area, as we saw on the mapping of the climatic evolution, which, which is maybe not interesting, interesting at the moment, but could become very interesting for us uh, by 2050 or even 2080, when the climatic evolution of the central area of Navarra, where is, it, where is located right now Pamplona, would be a very uh, hot one and where the, the mountainous areas would become much more interesting in terms of uh, climatic conditions. So this project proposal comes to be grafted onto the diffuse city, onto the suburban areas of Pamplona. In this context, so these uh, suburban areas of the east of Pamplona, 
and the existing villages around. So you can see on this map all the white uh, elements, which are the, already the construction, constructed uh, parts, the suburban area and existing villages. And uh, in red, orange, and uh, yellow, you could see the, the villages, the abandoned villages, the abandoned entities that form altogether the Rurapolis and could be uh, grafted to these existing uh, urban and rural areas. It forms actually an additional layer, an additional stage, which offers another form of post-urban growth, which is more organic, more capable of uh, anchoring itself in the territory without damaging its uh, resources. So this research project, project is based on a very close uh, study of the territory, which I have been working on in the, in the last one and a half year. I have spent a lot of uh, time on this territory to see how these connections were working together. So this project uh, methodology is based on a deep, deep exploration of the suburban and rural territory, including wandering, as we will experience, uh, as we experience it also with the, with our students. And uh, the, the sensitive approach generates an alternative cartography, which is essential for the project to step out of the kind of classic way of doing uh, urban planning. This, uh, this uh, alternative methodology is very close to the ground and really nourish in this way the project, as we will see with the, with the architectural uh, proposal we developed together with the students. The abandoned villages reactivated in a rehabilitation, rehabilitation scenario on a territorial scale are another point of the Rurapolis, uh, which is a police, so not a metropolis, another kind of police in opposition to this metropolis, which would be in this case formed by a network of rural nodes. And as you can see on this uh, hand mapping, these rural nodes are really composed by the close to study of the territory and by spending time on this territory. In order to make this connection visible on the territory, and because the reactivation of these abandoned villages does not Im only imply a thought about their possible rehabilitation, but also requires a reflection about an infrastructure of a new building complex that comes to complete to extend and to graft in itself into the existing one. So before uh, we go now to the, the more architectural part of the project, I show you here a video of one of these villages so you can understand uh, how the connection to, it, to the territory is made and how important it is also to, to study this connection of the territory, not only the abandoned villages. You can see here the abandoned village of Iso. And you can see with this uh, image from the uh, from above how the connection to it, to the territory is made, which are the roads, which are the connection, the water uh, system, etc. So I let the video to the end because I think we've got uh, some time for it. So this is an important uh, part of the research to spend time on this. Uh, also on the asking ourselves how we can uh, visibilize the, the, this territory and how we put it into light. And uh, now I'm going to explain the second part of the, of the research work, which is the more architectural one. Because the idea uh, to an end of, uh, of uh, thinking the possible rehabilitation and reactivation of abandoned village is uh, also uh, a reflection around vernacular materials, which would be stone, wood, uh, that are materials which have a long tradition in the Basque culture and in the regional context of uh, Navarre, Aragon, and the uh, Atlantic Pyrenees. And in addition, uh, I added another reflection around another kind of material, with, uh, material which is the raw earth and the system, uh, the, mat the material technique of compressed raw earth, which is called tabiya, which is a, an Arabic word, word uh, which describes very good this ancestral technique. 
which is a traditional construction technique that is getting progressively reused in contemporary architecture because it's considered here as a, um, an, essential, an essential complementary technique uh, due to its versatility and also to its uh, living and ecological qualities as you use only what you have uh, on site and you use it as a basic and uh, ground construction material. So the abandoned structures that form the Rapolis I showed before on the map, on this very big territorial map and you saw on, uh, on this one video, uh, these abandoned structures would be reinforced by logistical and cultural platforms in buildings, which could also be meeting places, extension of uh, earthen concrete uh, habitats, which are extending the organic, the earthy dimension of the project. So in this more extended uh, territorial project, which is almost a utopian vision of uh, what could be an alternative to suburban constructions, I propose to build um, a real prototype to work with the materiality of Earth to experience also the idea of reactivation of an abandoned village by spending time there. And finally, with the creation of a small prototype within a few days uh, to create also a moment of gathering of a physical cultural events that would make us feel alive in these rooms in, in this uh, depopulated, depopulated village that uh, didn't see anyone for, for various decades. And uh, to, to develop this, this first prototype, I chose this one village, which is part of my, of my corpus of the Rapolis, which is Egulbati. Egulbati is an abandoned village located in a natural reserve that belongs to the municipality of the uh, Egues Valley, of the Valle de Egues which is very close to Pamplona. That was, that, that's why also I chose it for the, for the first prototype of uh, my project. Um, we chose this village for the organization of an international summer school that uh, took place last year in summer 2022, and which was for me a good way to improve uh, my, my work on site uh, I did in the first year of my research. So here I show you some sketches of the planned construction we planned with the students on site. The idea was, was to make a first prototype of one uh, raw earth platform within the days we had. So we had uh, only a few days. So we planned on, on low, uh, only a first wall. We could be like the first wall of many other one of a new kind of mini city that would uh, graft onto the, uh, onto the existing rooms. So you have to imagine that this would be one of the milestones located along the network of paths of railways and of roads of this Rurapolis that would have multiple and evolving functionalities in the future. So this microarchitecture, which was initially uh, an isolated stage for the cultural events in a natural rural environment, could over time, with the reactivation of the villages next to it and the evolution of the climatic uh, of the, climate, uh, of the climate, as we saw before, it could become an open air venue, a uh, theater, also a logistic platform, or also the first plot for the rehabilitation of the rooms uh, to uh, transform the homes into uh, uh, in, in good living conditions. These structures created from materials from the ground itself are grafted onto the existing rooms, and they would evolve with the territorial development of the rural police. With the rammed earth, a rammed earth technique that we chose, one can begin to imagine a repair of the existing, also an, ex an extension, uh, new minimal uh, structures, or even new buildings in uh, unprocessed raw earth concrete. So it could be understood as a new concrete, which is thermically speaking adapted to the evolution of climate and thus to the evolution of our living conditions. This uh, full size proto prototype. We chose to make, which it, with it, uh, it with, with this uh, unique wall and the soil that belongs to the also to the architecture, uh, evokes the structure structuring figure both sacrally and socially of the fronton. The fronton is a key uh, architectural element in the special cons special construction of uh, Basque villages. It is a wall which is tradi traditionally located in a village square. square adjoining or using the church wall itself, designed 
uh, for the playing of the Basque uh, pelote, as many of you already know. Uh, why di did we choose this uh, this sculpture to start uh, this sculptural figure of the fronton to start the project? Because the fronton was, to my eyes, a kind of generic uh, architecture, which is it's in itself a simple masonry wall, often made of local stone, placed at the end of a flat rectangular area, measuring approximately approximately in most of the cases 10 to 30 meters. Examples of frontons are numerous in their size, in their shape, in their texture, also in their color and the finish vary in each community, in each town, in each valley or village. So the recreational and social use of the fronton is enhanced by its cultural meaning and identity. This simple and seemingly modest architecture is monumentalized by the role uh, that is assigned to it and its own rights. As a recurring and symbiotic figure, figure of the abandoned villages I visited during the first year of uh, my research, the fronton confers on a desolate and neglected, neglected landscape by its very presence, like we can see here on this image of the village of Aritakum, also in Navarre. Uh, it confers to this desolated uh, landscape uh, by its very presence, like a solitary totem, a timeless and almost sac sacred character. It transformed the void, delimiting the space, into a presence conducive to human, social, and cultural appropriation as a unique civilizational element. So in this line, the object created as a physical and real introduction to the field of analysis of the Rurapolis would be a kind of repetition of uh, this frontis, of this fronton. The model allows us to realize a simple prototypal uh, architecture within a few days, changed with a meaning that extrapolates its form and its mere presence in the territory. So to make a polis, to make city, to demonstrate the feasibility of the Rurapolis through the collective self-construction of a small, new and unifying monument in the middle of an abandoned village, of an abandoned landscape as uh, was Igulbati, where you can see the plan of the village on the right of this uh, slide. So um, this kind of uh, cultural and ID identary setting linked to an emblematic element of the rural heritage and its sociability, in our case, by invoking the figure of the Basque uh, fronton, is found in the work of the architect uh, Martino Pedrotti and the long-term process he initiated 30 years ago, which is uh, entitled Recom Recomposizioni, in the Ticino Alps in Switzerland. This is a project for the recovery of uh, rusticos, which are small one-story or single-story uh, buildings structured around a wooden frame, which, with, in this case, not a rammed earth uh, wall, but um, a massive dry stone envelope and a slate roof. These typical construction uh, are located also in the high mountains, and they were once used as an extra housing and barns during the summer months, during the transhumance. Today, due to the rural exodus and the changes also in agricultural production and livestock breeding, these architectural objects have fallen into disuse and are now a feature of the alpine uh, landscape, which is completely falling apart and progressively disappearing. The architect uh, Martino Pedrotti became interested in them in uh, 2094 and began to recompose them, to rearrange the stone in a sculptural manner around the perimeter of the site of each house. So you can see here one of these uh, former rustico and the installation that uh, the architect Pedrotti made with his students. Because uh, Pedrotti is a professor at the School of Architecture in Mendrisio, and he integrates this process of recomposition into a pedagogical program where several times in the recent uh, years, group of students, up to 100 sometimes students, so a huge group of students, go to the mountain pastures of the Malvalia Valley to participate in workshops of symbolic recomposition, recomposition after several hours of also walking to this remote uh, territory in the middle of nature, moving and recutting stones to recreate geometric volumes that take up the initial imprint of the, on the ground of each collapsed uh, building. 
this, uh, this recomposition are a tribute to a vanished way of civilization, which is actually questioning our current vision of the territory. Through the efforts, the displacement of the stone, once cut by hand by the peasant of Ticino, the landscape is again transformed by a simple and sculptural architectural gesture, repeated several times with patience and resilience, with no function other than its cultural and heritage uh, dimension. And uh, another example of the emblematic recovery of a rural figure is this work. Uh, from the Collectif Encore Heureux, which is a French architect's uh, collective. Uh, it's uh, entitled Super Cairo. And uh, the idea of this architecture is to mark the territory and anchor it in a space time which places the focus back again in lost modes and uses. It has been, it be, be, but in this case, it's, it happens to be a contemporary architecture. So it's not the recreation of a former building like uh, Martino Petrotti was doing with his, which, with his its um, recomposition. The collective described this architecture of the Super Cairo as both a work of art and a refuge. To my eyes, it has three interesting aspects in relation to the Rural Police platform project I uh, developed with my students. Firstly, it proposes the reinvention, reinvention of a vernacular heritage for the future, taking up a phenomenon that marks out the path of the region, which are the piles of stones that punctuate the path as landmarks, as well as the emblematic figure of the dolmen. This is an ancestral construction method that consists of piling up stones, as you can see on this model, which is not the building itself, but the, only the model, so piling up stones without mortar to create massive and almost immovable walls if they respect the precept of the local craftsmen that participated to the construction works. And these craftsmen that work with this uh, traditional ancestral method are called in the south of France, where the project is, is located, the lozier. So the architect worked with this uh, lozier to develop this contemporary architecture. Secondly, this uh, architectural creation is the result of a participative process and an anthropogenic, anthropological analysis of the territory in order to adapt it to the required use, uses that were uh, searched by this project. The Super Cairo is a refuge serving as a bivouac for pilgrims because it is located on the path of the Camino de Santiago, as well as a place of observation and meeting for the locals. And finally, the building designed according to, its, to this participative process has been also built collectively under the supervision of this uh, lozier, of the, of the experts in, the, in this uh, construction technique. Uh, and the idea of this collective construction is also to transmit traditional know-how, thus creating a sustainable movement between a remote corner of the territory and more populated areas. And um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna repeat now uh, to conclude in a kind of way, uh, the problematic I exposed at the, at the beginning of, the, of this presentation, uh, which was the question I asked myself at the beginning of this research, research uh, which is also nourishing uh, until now my research, which is, do we, do we have the rights as architects, as urban planners to, to continue to plan peripheral space and extensions of the city and the territory as we do it right now? Or at the contrary, should we think about another development model, which is not only thinking in terms of settlements, but also in terms of construction and uh, in terms of one-to-one -one scale, if we, as we saw it in the last uh, examples of uh, these two architects. Um, so this work is based on this idea of working on the territory. You saw before the, the sketches I made during my territorial uh, exploration on sites. And I show you now the mapping, which is like the more uh, in, yeah, investigated part of the project I did after this uh, territorial exploration, where, where I chose all the parameters which should be important and which I have to take into account in this research and put them into a large scale map. So this is the territorial scale of the project where you can see how each village is represented 
on the map in relation to the existing condition. So the natural condition, the urban condition, the existing rural condition, the use of the ground of the soil in each part of the pre pyrenean area. So I zoom here on the map so you can see some the, all the details of this mapping. And here are some more pictures also of the of the explorations on site of other villages. I show I show before the village of Egulbati of Izo. This is the village of Eransus of Apardues. So you can see that this work is really like always um, uh, going through different scaling, different uh, ways of exploiting the territory, going until inside the houses. Also see uh, how the, the infrastructure was built and what is disappearing is not only the ruins of uh, former living or former homes, but also what is disappearing is a, a whole organization of these villages, of the way of uh, managing the soil, of working on the ground, the ag agricultural conditions. You can see with this fontaine, uh, which had which possess in itself an irrigation system for the for the for the soil if you don't if you abandon it you also abandon this kind of uh, infrastructure inside of the homes another video of a bigger village which is called Tiermas in the north of Aragon which has been abandoned like most of the villages in the 1960s this is a kind of bigger village which has been abandoned because of the uh, embalse, the Yesa. I don't know the name of embalse in English, I'm sorry. So of this uh, big uh, water pound that, which has been built by Franco in, in the 1960s and forced the inhabitants to abandon their homes to be relocated in other parts. So one of the villages of my corpus is also Tiermas. And all this corpus of the, on the of the investigation on site is part of my uh, of my PhD. It's one, one important chapter of my research, which I put here in frame. And I explain each each, uh, each condition, the history of uh, of almost each village. And so I have sixty two right now in my corpus which is composing this Rurapolis you see on the map. Apart from the villages, so I've got 60 villages and also two abandoned fabrics, factories, which are also part of the, of the rural panorama right now. And also shows how uh, the uses and the condition changed in uh, what we have now, which is would be, could be described as the post-industrial uh, era. And back to the summer school, I'm going to show very quickly, in order to, to finish the presentation, uh, some images of the summer school I organized last year, with uh, together, as I said at the beginning of the present presentation, together with the Architecture School of Versailles, where uh, a group of uh, around 20 students participated from all parts of Europe and also the world, because we had uh, also two Canadians. And so with this group of uh, European and international students, we uh, worked on the first prototype in the abandoned village of uh, Egulbati. So um, there were several times in the summer school, some lectures where uh, I invited um, uh, architects that are also working on the, the, on the problematic of rural uh, despoblation and of uh, how we can reactivate and work on this uh, on this uh, tension between urban and rural. Some workshops to appropriate ourselves the techniques of the rammed earth. We made an exhibition in the center of Pamplona, and at the end of the in the last days of the summer school. So you can see here the prototypes how the students were improving with the techniques. You can see all the mapping work I exposed in this exhibition in the Palacio Condestable in Pamplona. So the students could understand from the beginning the problematic that was uh, here uh, put in scene and uh, the work we did uh, in Egulbati. So this was the first, day of the first days of the workshop, the preparation of the earth. We used earth 
uh, on site and some are from the south of uh, of Navarra, which had a lot of clay in it, which is necessary for the construction of a ramp earth. And how you and here you can see all the all the process, all the path that the students could learn on site. So here the prototype we managed to build in a few days with this group of students. And at the end of the workshop, uh, I organized a performance uh, so that the local inhabitants, which were are from the village just nearby, which is called Sagaceta, and also people who were interested in, in, in the problematic and working also on the problematic, for example, also the municipality, municipality of the Valle de Igues, could uh, come to the village and see how uh, this idea of Rurapolis, of reactivating one single village and also a group of village could work in the future. And so the cultural intervention of this performance by Galina Rodriguez, which is a contemporary dancer living in Pamplona, how this cultural event can be like the first milestone of uh, reactivation, which could be at the end, the visualization of this utopian project of the Rurapolis. And I don't know if we have the time to see the uh, like the first uh, few minutes from the video before we have the questions. The de la police vise à donner un ancrage terrestre, culturel et architectural, ainsi qu'une résonance régionale, transfrontalière et européenne à un projet de recherche intitulé Rurapolis. Ce projet vise à repenser la périphérie à partir des ruines rurales sur un territoire transfrontalier en action. Mené sur ce territoire transfrontalier entre la Navarre et l'Aragon, côté espagnol et les Pyrénées-Atlantiques en France. Les ruines rurales qui sont présentes en très grand nombre sur ce territoire seraient, dans ce scénario, réactivées par un réseau de plateformes d'interaction culturelles et logistiques réalisées en terre crue, créant une trame identifiable sur le territoire et visibilisant ainsi le projet de Rurapolis en venant l'inaugurer sur le temps. Cette Summer School de la Police est lancée avec un atelier d'initiation à la terre crue dans la salle gothique d'un bâtiment public magnifiquement restauré, le CIEUX Condestable, mis à disposition par la mairie de Pampry. Au cours de cet atelier exposition est introduite la Rura Police. Le matériel cartographique qui est exposé a été créé sur la base d'une exploration prospective du territoire. Au cours de cet atelier, on va déjà fabriquer des maquettes cylindriques de terre compressée, donc de pisé, avec des échantillons de terre collectés sur le territoire et ailleurs. Cet atelier rend visible publiquement, dans cet édifice emblématique au cœur de la ville de Pamplune, le problème général du mitage urbain et euh, du dépeuplement rural, ainsi que les solutions écologiques et environnementales. So I, I cut the video here, but you can watch the whole video on this uh, link, on this web page, uh, if you're interested in, in learning more about uh, my research projects. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Salomé. And it was really fascinating and inspiring to listen to that talk and to see so much imagination going to the problem which surrounds us at this moment. Yeah, uh, we have a question here, and I would like to invite uh, Yulia Pavlova from our Kinesis project to, um, yeah. to, to present her question. Hello. Okay. I no, I just want to ask a very short question. Yeah. In the beginning, you showed um, you showed uh, the map with the uh, with the villages that are um, also reactivated. Do you have also like specific examples? Because I'm thinking it might help me maybe. Yeah, we we are just starting on a project looking at two or three different abandoned well not abandoned but uh, villages that are in the downward spiral at the moment, and we were looking for villages which have been reactivated. And ah. we wondered if maybe you can give us some information about this. Like as an inspiration. Uh, and a very interesting example, which is the village of Zorokain. I can send you maybe the, the, I can write the name in the chat if you want. Yeah. Zorokain, which is interesting because um, it's a project that has been mounted by a community uh, about almost 10 years ago, I think. And uh, they contracted uh, one architect, which are the architects of Oregari Studio. I work with them together on, on another project, not on this one, mm -hmm. but 
project. And these architects were uh, contracted to build five houses, to rebuild five houses of this abandoned village. And Zorokan is also interesting because before, um, before they started to occupy the village, they uh, started uh, the rehabilitation of the former church, which is not a church anymore, into a community center. So they started to use the, ch the former church before they started to use their um, proper homes. So I think this is a kind of uh, interesting project. Otherwise, maybe you know it already, you have the village of Lacabe, which is one of the older ones, because it has been uh, reoccupied already in the 1980s. So it's a very old um, occupation you have here, a reactivation, one of, one of the most uh, settled, organized, and uh, like, yeah, because it's since a very, very long time. Uh, but if you want to contact them, they, they've got a, a web page. For example, like Abbey. So you can contact mm -hmm. them, and they don't uh, want people to go like this without um, advising before. So the best is to contact them through the webpage. And every Sunday, they have a bakery on site. They're, so they make their own bre bread. And you can go to the bakery and buy some bread. So I think it's a good way to, to, put, to put yourself in contact with them without. Okay. Uh, yes. The, Sorry, Salome. Just the first village you mentioned there, which was. So which, I can write sorry? it in. Sorokain. Sorokain, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's all right. I'm going to write it in there. Yeah, okay, no, no, I'm just writing. Yeah, um, we were also in a village called Aisarots, but Aisarots was more like a new village. They actually, mm -hmm. they didn't really rebuild the old things. Okay. The, the just yeah. whole valley decided that they were going to have a new village and it has mm -hmm. new houses. And it's also been fairly successful yeah, in this way, yeah. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Remember in the village, I showed, I, I showed us a picture of Eransus, Mm -hmm. The village uh, was abandoned during during decades, since the 1960s, but just next to Eransus, which is also part of Eransus, you get a, an eco-village, which yeah. has been built in the 1990s, mm -hmm. so it's not yeah. part of the ruins of the village, but you have this new little settlement, mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. even, yeah, it's more like uh, an aldea than a village, mm -hmm. but part of Eransus, yeah. Yeah. How nice. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, that's very, Thank very you. interesting. Thank you, Julia, for, for that question. Yes. Um, do we have any other questions? No, we have no questions. Okay, Antonio. Well, so in that case, um, just one, just checking here, the people. No, sorry, I have the students sitting in another yeah. one. <laughs> that's the problem. Well, thank you so much for that. Um, we, we have recorded the session and we will put it on our YouTube channel for student training, if that's okay with you. Yeah, it's perfect. And uh, we would like to invite you here physically to Pamplona uh, the next time that you're somewhere near because it will be fascinating to talk to you. Great. Thank I just you. Thank you so much. I'd just like to say that the last of our seminars, this series will be next Wednesday, 22nd of March. And... It's called Should I Stay or Should I Go? Research on Students' Perceptions of Livability in the Area of Zeeland in the Netherlands. And it's going to be Ingrid Snyders presenting some hands-on research that she's been doing for her research project in the University of Applied Sciences, uh, which is in Groningen. So that's another very interesting seminar that we've got coming up in one week's time. So thank you very much for attending and please look for our videos on the YouTube channel of Kinesis because of many, many topics that are related to depopulation and shrinkage and regeneration of rural areas. So thank you so much and I'll see you all next week. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much, Salome. Okay, goodbye. Bye.